Scotty Danielson was a two-sport athlete at North St. Paul High School. His greatest love was basketball. He went to Wisconsin River Falls and was hoping to get good enough to try out for the team there. But then there was that day. The day in 1997, he was playing a pickup game. And uh, they tossed me the ball and, and it hit me in the head. Because I put my arm up to just to deflect it because the stroke had just occurred like two seconds prior to that. I pulled myself out of the game because I knew something wasn't right. And I went to get a drink of water out at the drinking fountain. And I bent down. The last thing I remember is bending down. He lost consciousness. What followed that day was one he does not remember, but his family certainly does. I get a phone call saying somebody's, my uncle's going to meet me back at the house, that something happened to my brother, and my uncle's going to come pick me up. So um, I didn't think it was going to be anything like real serious. They made it to the hospital just in time. Ten hours of brain surgery is what he had. And you have no idea what they're going to say when they come through the door? Nope. Nope. What did they say? Well, they said that they were able to fix the arterial venous malformation, that they fixed it, and they did the best that they could do, and then it was a waiting game. We just have to wait and see. He made it through the surgery. That was supposed to be good news. And then the doctor came out and said, um, I can assure you that your son will live, but I'm not so sure that you'll thank us for this. That's what so, they said. Huh? Yeah, yeah. A five and a half month coma would follow. One of the first things he said is, I'm so sorry I put you through this sequence of events or catastrophic sequence of events. And I remember my dad said, I think he's going to be all right. There were moments that no one will understand. Don't promise people something that you don't want to lose if they're in a coma. So my dad promised to give me a Mustang, and I remembered it. You did? Yeah. You didn't even know why? You don't even. You, do you I don't know. Him saying no, it? I don't remember him saying it. But, but when you woke up, you. I said, Where's my car? Did he get it for you? I got it from him. <laughs> Life has changed in 15 years of therapy for Scotty Danielson. What he has not lost is his love for the game of basketball. Let's go, let's go. He's returned to his high school. St. Paul. This time as a coach. Yes, yeah, fellas. Go practice, guys. <laughs> Working with coaches he once coached. It is where he loves to be in the gymnasium. Nice job, Abe. And this is what he loves to do. Basketball has always been his number one love in life. And I remember his mom telling me one day before a game that he gets up at noon. Or he does all his physical therapy stuff, but he starts getting ready for games at noon, putting a shirt and tie on, putting the vest on. He's just ready to go, and our games are until 5 30. So. Slow it down, relax, relax, Red. You could tell he's a gym rat. He just loves to be around the game. He's always sitting there, always giving pointers to kids. When we're on breaks, he's always sitting down, helping the kids out. He does a great job for us. What do you think this game means to him, basketball? Everything. He was known as tenacious when he played, intense even on his easygoing days. I remember him flying around a lot and going really fast. I think his coaches were always saying, slow down, slow down. I think Sky still probably holds the Minnesota State record for the most charges. You know, like, I'm, I'm serious. Throughout his whole career, like, I didn't care if the guy was uh, Javier Collins, 6'10 out of St. Thomas Academy. He was going to try to draw, draw, uh, charge, uh, draw the charge. Like, it was crazy. If he's chewing gum, I want to know what kind it is. That's how close you are to him, okay? Together. Together. So he's back to offer some of that to his players, a group that understands where he's been and welcomes what he offers. You guys get inspired by him? him? come out here, mm -hmm. is that committed to this program, does it inspire you a little bit? Yeah, a lot. Let's go, Les John! <laughs> nice job, Econ. No, during the games, you know, like, if we're not working hard, he'll, he'll get on us, like, a lot. So, like, that's why we all we work hard every single minute, every second. Do they swallow their whistles on our end now, or what? Let's go, John! Good take. That's who he is, what his life has been built on. Hard work can overcome almost all. It's a simple premise that has had to carry him for 15 years. You have to love this game, the team, the essence of basketball. Not bad, Red, but not great. 
We can, we can do better. Love basketball? Yes, I've always had a serious love for the game of basketball. Kind of a gym rat, huh? You like yeah. to be at the gym? Love being in the gym. And I still do. I, I, when, I, when I go home after practices, now that I'm, co when I'm coaching, I, I go to sleep at night and I love hearing the basketball still bouncing in my head. One, two, three, seven. Good. Oh, come on! Yeah, nice follow! Way to put the pressure on, Red! He's seen more tough times in recent years. A seven-year marriage ended that produced his biggest joy, a daughter. I have a picture of her on my phone. Is she one of your inspirations, too? Yes, I love her so much. And Ellie, by the way, if you're watching, if you see this, I love you. Now he's pushing off. Hands. Good day, Red. Good job. And so he is able to lean on his family and his basketball family. This journey that is life is so filled with uncertainty, but it's also filled with happiness, a pride that says you cannot beat him. I love coaching with him because he's just always, the guy's got a laugh that you, you got to find a way to make him laugh because it's going to make you guys laugh. It's, like, it's, probably, it's hey. probably a Michael Bolton <laughs> concert or something. <laughs> Anytime there's a tense moment in a locker room, he knows the exact thing to say to just lighten the mood a little bit. You call that, you call that shooting cotton candy? Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> He's making people proud in the process. They know where he has been. They know where he is. They know what he's done to get here. Very good person, tremendous athlete. And to see where he went and see where he's at now, two thumbs up. Let's go, Ryan. Good game, fellas. Good game, fellas. Good game, fellas. Good game, fellas. Thanks. Well, the kid made it through and turned into a man. And now he's teaching what that means to pick yourself up and keep driving inside your passion zone. That's Scotty Danielson. Or in these parts, you can just call him coach. Just look at what he's gone through. He's been in a coma for five and a half months, wasn't supposed to make it through and fight through everything. You just don't give up. Don't ever give up. And that's what you learn from him, huh? That's what I learned from him. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch. Photography for a lifetime.